18 months from now or perhaps shorter, the case will be dismissed. There will never be a conviction and Ken Paxton, at least today, can begin to go back and do what he should have been doing all along and that is representing the state of Texas. For the better part of a decade, a dark cloud of potential criminality has hung squarely over the head of Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton in the form of three felony counts of securities fraud. This week, the lingering threat of removal from office and possible prison time simply melted away in a courtroom deal many view as a judicial bullet dodged by the once embattled AG. At the end of the day, it is not a plea bargain. He didn't plead. There is no admission of guilt. There will never be an admission of guilt because he's not guilty, but we're glad to have this behind us. In a settlement brokered with special prosecutors, Paxton agreed to a pretrial intervention contract, otherwise known as diversion, the terms of which include 100 hours of community service, 15 hours of ethics training, and most significantly, the payment of at least $271,000 in restitution. Restitution, first and foremost, that was a game changer. Secondly, community service like any other defendant. The question isn't whether or not who won, but was justice served. And I think the answer to that is unmistakably yes. Panel seven months ago, Ken Paxton was facing removal from office via impeachment and up to 99 years in prison on the fraud charges. Instead, our state's controversial top cop has now survived both threats and has emerged more politically powerful than ever. Let's start with you, Bill King, uh, on the legal case, and we'll get to the power later. I would be terrifically surprised by the outcome here. This is uh, These kind of cases really are more akin to civil litigation in a lot of ways, and I think this just became a crime about 10 years ago. Uh, in Texas before that it was a civil penalty so I'm not terribly surprised about the outcome this was a little more lenient than I expected but I never thought he was gonna go to prison over this Charles you're an attorney and I'm sure you followed some of this litigation uh, are you surprised by this outcome well I don't know if I'm surprised I am disappointed I mean Dan Cogdell famed trial lawyer great lawyer right but he's representing his client and engaging in some little bit uh, lawyer parsing when he says this isn't a plea bargain. This is absolutely a plea bargain. It's agreement, although there's no formal plea entered. And it is what you do when you know that they got you, but they offer you this sweetheart way to not have it go on your record. I also think Weiss's characterization as this isn't about winning or losing, it absolutely is. It was an incredible loss by the state. You talk about uh, $271,000 in restitution. I'd like to know how many millions of dollars were wasted by the state in this prosecution. And damn it, he should have been put in front of a jury and he should have been held to account for his criminality. It's not civil. This was awful behavior by Texas's top cop and it's repugnant that he got away with it. Tomorrow, there's an old term, uh, you can beat the rap, but you can't beat the ride. In this case, it looks like he beat them both. I don't even know are we talking about this clown. I did owe everything Charles said. He should have had a trial, and if I had been on that, he would have went to jail. All right, Marcus. Uh, <laughs> you're no fan of Ken Paxton, uh, and you got plenty of company. Uh, yeah. When you saw this unfold, uh, what was your reaction? Well, let's, for the record, it's not whether or not I'm a fan of Ken Paxton or not. This is about uh, the right thing being done and the wrong thing being done, and this was not uh, taken to the jury to determine whether or not he did the right thing or did the wrong thing. He got a sweetheart of a deal. I mean, look at the luxury, man. He, you got to put this thing off for 10 years, right? And then not only do you get to put it off for 10 years, it doesn't go on your record. You get to walk away free. I'm sure that there are several people who committed small crimes mm -hmm. in Harris County Jail that would like this type of, I'm going to use the P word, privilege. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just going to call I'm just going to call it political privilege, powerful privilege, opportunities that you get when you ascend to a certain uh, economic rank and when you ascend to a certain political rank, you get the freedom to commit crimes and not have anything done about it. And now this idea that he's not guilty, I, last I checked, no one gives away a quarter of a million dollars for something that they didn't do. Last Amen. I checked, people don't just volunteer to go out and do community service unless they're good-hearted people that do community service. This is a farce, and I, I, I did a, what, 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 what Charles said uh, as, as well. So, uh, Brian Weiss said they conferred with the prime victims in this case. They wanted to get their money and this deal was one way to ensure mm -hmm. that they were in some way made financially whole. 
Uh, do you do you, do you buy that, that that line of thinking? Well, I think ultimately they went to court um, so they could get their money, and you know it took them ten years to get their money, um, and now now they're gonna you know get their restitution, and he has to do the community service. So yeah, if if I'm the one that that I thought somebody you know stole from me, um, took money they shouldn't. And I had to wait 10 years to be able to get that that money back. Um, my thing is, is there like any interest attached to I, that thank money you. Um, on that settlement at all? But I'm glad for them; they're going to get their money back, be able to move on. And um, and I think uh, Rice was white on that. I mean, it was about them getting their money back. Everybody else, I think, took and ran with it for another reason. They, they should they should have gotten the IRS type interest put on that or something equivalent to what was promised in the deal in the first place. What the return on the investment was in the, the promise of return ROI in the first place, that's what the money they should have gotten. Quickly, Bill, uh, this was about uh, operating without the right, the right certification as well as not disclosing that he was being paid. And, and that's where the fraud, the alleged fraud came in real quickly. Yeah, so uh, you can commit fraud by omission which is you fail to disclose a material fact. It's very difficult to prove because you've got to prove it is a material fact that would have made a difference in the outcome of the transaction. It was, it was a pretty tough case, I think, to, to make. Uh, look, I, I think he's a crook just like everybody else does, but in this particular case, I'm not sure the outcome is all that surprising to me.